Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed to Michael Voris. Time is running out on the country. Correction. Time may have already run out. We're just waiting for the impact. But regardless of whether there is something left to salvage and the ability and desire to push back against the culture-destroying forces of communism, one thing is clear, as it always has been. Without Catholicism, specifically Catholicism, the country is at an end. It's gone. And we aren't talking about individuals likely hell-bound Catholics like Joe and Nancy. We are talking about the actual faith, the teachings of the church, the ones that lot deny while still being allowed to claim the mantle of Catholics by an even larger, more revolting crowd of bishops who allow it, even promote it. The Catholic Church, the human dimension, has been overrun by the Protestant heresy. When we talk about the church and nice, that's actually what we're talking about. That large group of Catholics who have joined themselves to the lie that is Protestantism. Protestantism is a lie because it is a heresy. We've been hitting this theme all week. And heresies, like schisms, lead to hell for the unrepentant. Both heresy and schism deny certain truths of the divinely established Catholic Church. And in the case of Protestantism, it does so... Kind of subtly. See, Protestants shifting away from the system to actual individuals now, before we were talking about the system, now we're talking about people, Protestants do have some truths of the Catholic faith. Normal ones believe in the Trinity, for example, three persons, one God. They accept the divinity of Jesus Christ. They accept something about baptism, at least something, just not the fullness of it, normally speaking. They believe in the final judgment, the last day, the resurrection of the body on the last day. They believe scriptures are inspired. But here's the rub. Every single last one of those beliefs they get from Catholicism, period. They didn't come up with those on their own. They belong to us. We're happy to share them. Just take them all. When Martin Luther and his heretical cohort were walking out of the church, they took a few things with them, those beliefs among them. And then over the centuries, Luther's followers have taken those Catholic treasures and distorted them almost beyond recognition. In the area of theology, for example, Protestants don't have a clue about sacred scripture, although they all dance around like they do. They interpret it for themselves and they fill in the blanks as they go along, essentially making it up. What it creates is an environment where instead of being instructed by Scripture, you instruct it. Protestants impose their personal beliefs on the texts and they twist them to mean whatever they like the most. That principle is the major reason why there are 40,000 different branches, different denominations of that heretical sect. When they disagree with what this verse or that passage means, some dude just goes off and starts his own religion. And notice we say congregation here, religion, a congregation, not church. There is only one church. Christ called it, not them, his church, not churches. Even calling themselves a church is a lie. They're not a church. They're normally nothing more than a nonprofit organization that meets once or twice a week and occasionally gets something correct in scripture, but most of the time makes a shipwreck of the sacred texts because they have denied the authority of the Catholic Church who gave the world the Bible. It's our book. You don't take it and then get to tell us what it means. And then having denied the authority of the church to correctly interpret it, even though, again, the church produced it, then they claim a right which they do not possess, the ability to interpret scripture. They have no such right and they have no such ability. They are in error. Whether they are aware of their error or not, that's not the point. That will be for God to decide and mete out judgment or mercy accordingly. But here on earth, note this very well, every single Protestant person. Every last one is being led to hell because of those errors. Might some be preserved somehow, some way? Again, that's for God's inscrutable ways. But no one gets to heaven, enters into the beatific vision because he subscribed to and followed error. Not a chance in hell he gets to heaven. Protestantism is a lie. 
It denies true worship of God, the way God himself directed that worship to be done. It denies the authority of the church as Christ himself invested it. It denies the need for apostolic succession, being able to trace directly back to the apostles themselves. Protestants are 1,500 years late to that game. It denies the history of sacred scripture. It denies the efficacy of the sacraments, most especially the real presence of Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. It twists and distorts sacred scripture in the egotistical air of telling congregations what they want to hear. Protestantism does not deal in truth, even if like most heresy, there is some truth present. It itself is a lie. It lies about divorce and remarriage. It lies about birth control. It lies about fornication. It lies about adultery. It, again, like all heresy, corrupts all that is good that comes into contact with it. Its sole purpose is to destroy. It destroys the intellect. It destroys the will. Its leading spokesmen put up roadblocks and they lay obstacles for their followers who do want to know the actual truth. No Protestant minister, no Protestant so-called bishop has any more authority for preaching or interpreting scripture than any other man on earth. He is nothing but a layman. Where would this authority come from? He rejects the church, which traces its line back to the apostles themselves. So who says he's right or has a shred of authority to lead souls? Well, ultimately no one but himself. That's who. So, big deal. He went to a seminary founded on heresy that may have awarded him a diploma to go add to the heresy. That's not authority. That's just further distortion. Now, if all that sounds rough, well, good. That means something inside you. Your conscience is disturbed. You should follow that. This evil heresy, perhaps more so than any others, because of its vast reach, has been permitted to flood into great portions of Christ's church by the very men charged with protecting the sheep, not exposing them to the wolves. The bishops, oh, they're going to pay a very heavy price in the next life for not combating this evil by pretending that we are, well, essentially all the same. We're not essentially all the same, meaning in essence, they deny the church and he who denies the church denies Christ himself. You will frequently hear Protestants refer to the church and what they mean by that is anyone at all who claims to believe in Christ. That's not the church, not even close. Protestants subscribe to heresy, again, knowingly or not, depending on the individual, and that's God's judgment. But it is heresy nonetheless, a lie, even if they have imported some tidbits of Catholic truth here or there. It does not equip one for salvation, it equips one for self-delusion. And that Catholic bishops would permit this evil, this lie, and some even push it, means they will be held the most accountable. No bishop can allow or even cooperate in the damnation of his own flock and somehow think that he won't be damned. Catholic lady must cease immediately with coddling this lie, varnishing over with some pretense that, well, they don't want to offend people. I mean, all religions are basically the same and there are many ways to God. Such responses are the very core of the Protestant lie, a rejection of true authority and assuming unto oneself an authority that they do not possess. Not a single book of the Bible, for example, itself claims to be inspired, not one. Yet Protestants go on and on about the Bible being inspired. Well, since the Bible itself doesn't even claim that, then why do they believe it? There's a very simple answer to that question, but we're gonna let it hang there. Just like that. Why believe something about the Bible that the Bible itself doesn't even claim? There's only one correct answer, and here's a hint. You ain't going to find it in the lie of the Protestant heresy. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.